Anybody have any feedback on the pronunciation test? Were you irritated or surprised? Anything like that? Anybody have feedback? Some of you only got one wrong, so you should feel OK. Any other feedback, Wendy? So you got it right the first time, and then you changed it, and it was wrong. People say to trust your first intuition, but it's not always true, because sometimes when you correct it, it's right. The second answer is right. So you can't really say your first intuition is always right. With pronunciation, you're using a lot of your unconscious brain to recognize sounds. So you definitely should listen to that part of your brain. But what it really means is that you need to work some more and also you are absolutely confident. Anybody else? Do you have any feedback? Mm -hmm. um, this time, I do most correct one when I like, change, change the answers the second time. So the second answer was correct. So that's what I meant, yeah. <laughs> any other feedback, Miranda? Well, I think it's um, difficult when you can't Sound. Absolutely. That's right. Number one is you can't compare it to the one that is similar, for, for example, set sat. And number two, you have no context. So for example, he set it on the table. You already know what it is from context. But I have really learned over the years that Taiwanese rely heavily on context to understand. Not on the vowels. They're relying on the context. And if you can compare them, then that's easy. That's cheating, sort of. We found that with dictations before, right? When I had the contrasting sounds, like one was number two and one was number eight. When you got to number eight, you changed number two, right? So we need to be able to hear them completely without context and be con really be confident. And that's not so easy. OK, Tina, any, any feedback? Mm -hmm. Most of the uh, wrong answer I write, uh, the old Old problems. You knew exactly what they were. For example, e and i. We worked on that in class, I remember, with you. And that's where they, the problems turned up. Yeah. So it just told you what you already knew. Yeah. OK. Anybody else any feedback? Bella, you did well. I just want to guess what you're trying to give us. You weren't sure what the point was. Yeah. But when you see the other people's mistakes, then you know. Sit, sat, for example. A lot of people had problems with that. Vivian, any feedback? surprised that I got year and year right. Good for you. <laughs> we worked on that in Ying Ting, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I remember in Ying Ting. Yeah. OK. Carol, any feedback? Uh, I'm sure I'd be saying things like when he says uh, that I, I got it, uh, the right one for the first time and I changed it to. So the wrong one. And then you get really irritated with yourself, right? You think I should have just left it. Yeah. Any other feedback, Sylvie? I got uh, two dark L's wrong. Two? Dark L. Two dark L's wrong. Okay, we need to work on dark L's. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, usually I don't pronounce dark L. It's more like an O from me. So you should change it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. We should work on it. Um, Jerome, any feedback? Um, I hesitate between his and his. Because, what? Well, uh, to me, original is the same. Uh -huh. So, I pronounce both words. <laughs> so, this gives you good information. We don't say his book, we say his book. It's really his. We really do that. Any, any feedback? Just like Miranda, because we cannot compare the author's sounds from his author's sounds to the other one. That's the kind of training we need. Amy, any feedback? You only had one. And you were irritated at that one. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I sort of like, don't really have the dark L that much um, model. And often because in Taiwan, people often say model, like model, like a, mo like a model. Uh -huh. And so you can't really get an L. Even for, oh, OK. Yeah. OK. So 
I hope it's given you some useful information. That was the purpose of it. It will help you know where you should concentrate your attention and energies. Yeah? But I know the average grades that they got in the workshop. In the workshop? It's hard to say about average because actually the same thing happened here as in the, av as in the workshops. A lot of people got in the 60s. Some people got 90s. There was one who got 96 in the workshop as well. She was really sharp at the front. A lot of people got 60s, 70s, 80s. We had everything. We had everything. And a lot of them, most of them are English teachers. And so it's a shock for them. But like I said, after the test, this is the first year that I've done a test at the beginning. Otherwise, I just jump in and I'm teaching you this and I'm teaching you that and they're taking notes. But this hits you. You think, ah, why did I get that wrong? And then you pay more attention. So this year, they've been actually quite passionate. You know, thank you so much for this information. So it's my feeling that this test actually has a very tsung man to young. It's very useful. And it helps motivate people because they know, aha, I actually do have this problem. It's not just learning, oh, sometime when he's had this problem, but not me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at page 8 in the, in the web pages for phonetics 2. Now, normally we jump right in to the new chapter. We can't wait to get through it. We even want to get started before we take the test on the previous chapter. Why are we not doing that this time? Anybody know? It's too hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what, Wendy? That's right, he did. But in fact, the original edition already had problems, the same kind of problem. But now, in fact, I have to say it's gotten even more. I'm trying to find a nice word here. <laughs> it's gotten more serious. It's gotten more serious. If we can pinpoint the problem, then we'll have a good starting point for second hour. Anybody know what the problem is? In fact, I discussed this exact issue with Peter Latifoged while he was still around, and we were emailing. I would be using the book, teaching it. I get student feedback. I get student looks like. <laughs> then I had to try and figure out what the problem was, and then I'd get back to Peter on it, and we'd talk about it. And he agreed, and he said, that's why I created a lot of these web pages, especially for semester two. It's for this very reason. He said he wanted to do more of that. I mean, he was already in his, in his late 70s at the time, so there was not much time left. And he was really active. He was still flying all over the world, giving lectures, still doing field work as far as I know. He was active up until the day he fell over and died. I mean, he was actually lucky in that way at age 80. He just fell over, had a series of strokes, I believe, and the third one took him. He was gone within a day, I believe. It was very fast. Up to that point, he had just gotten back from India. It wasn't like he got sick in India and died of it. He had a stroke, I believe. So he was active up to the end. He was so busy. But we talked about this, and he agreed that this was a good direction, something he wanted to do. Um, anybody know what I'm talking about? What the issue is, what the core issue is? We said hard, but I said hard. But what is underneath hard? You have a lot of classes that are hard, right? A lot of textbooks that are hard. But do you believe you can learn this stuff? Yes or no? Depends. <laughs> Depends? OK, in most classes, let's say in the Y, when she, it may be hard. But do you believe if you work at it, you can get it? That's why you're here. It's because you're that kind of a person. Things will be hard, and some students will be overwhelmed and give up and think that they're not able to do it. But what? distinguishes you from a lot of people who don't get into Tai Da is that but then you sit down and you work on it till you figure it out. You master it, you pass the test, you go on to the next step. That's what I see as one key difference between you and a lot of people who don't get this far. right? Because even though something's difficult and overwhelming, you will sit down with it. You know that you can do it if you work hard enough at it, in my opinion. Is, is that your attitude or not? Not always? Not always. At least for some things, because if you didn't have that attitude, you simply would not be here today. You know that if you work hard enough at it, you will get it. And a lot of people think it's too hard. I, I'm just not going to do it. So what I'm getting down to, the issue with the text this year and previous years, it's always been this way. When we get to acoustics, we are no longer in the Wenxue Yuan, right? 
We're no longer in the Yuan Shui Yuan. <laughs> okay, so uh, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Remember that story? We're not in Kansas anymore. We're, we're in physics. We're in physics and math. Now, physics and math, are they impossible? No. But a lot of us shied away from them because we could do language better and we didn't want to be bothered with math anymore. Gola. However, you're going to find this semester that math is doable, that physics is doable. The problem in physics and math for you, for some of you, some of you probably have no problem, is similar to the problem with English for a lot of students. English, they miss some steps and then afterwards it becomes too complex. So we've jumped to something too difficult and we haven't shown the steps how we got there. Now the problem with this textbook, which I believe is now even more of a problem than it was previously, is we are assuming too much background in physics. 假定你已经懂那么多,我们才讲这些东西。还开始讲的地方, he's assuming that you know what harmonics are. And in my experience of teaching this class for over 10 years, almost nobody in any of my classes knew what harmonics are. He's assuming harmonics. He's not going to teach you about harmonics. He's, he's just putting it in the background. He doesn't even mention the word harmonics. He's talking about the resonances. If you don't know about harmonics, harmonics, you can't know about resonances. Right? You see, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole genji of talking about, harmon about resonances, is you have to know what harmonics are. The book does not tell you. It has never told you. At least not enough. One year, I had an outstanding student from physics. He had to learn this stuff too. Don't feel bad. He was in physics. But physics in Taiwan, from my observation, does not spend much time on acoustics. In high school, you didn't have much on acoustics, maybe a little bit, right? Even at the university, this physics student had not had a lot of the things in acoustics that we were doing in this class which does not mean it's so hard that even a physics student didn't have it. It means it's simply a gap. That's all. And once you get it, there's going to be like one part where you, your mind has to sort of like get over a wall. So be ready for that wall, but everybody gets over it. Every single person has gotten over it. And once you're over it, you feel so good. It feels, excuse me, so strong. It feels really good. <laughs> Because now you've got a secret that most other people in the Y when she don't have. You know how vowels work, and you understand it thoroughly. And it feels like we've got a little secret society here of people who get it and people who don't. <laughs> so I'm just telling you what's going to happen ahead. But in order to get there, we have to, we have to figure out some of the steps that are omitted from the textbook. OK? That's the background. We're going to take our break and start on this after break. All right, I just gave you an additional thing to put into your notes for Monday. I want all of you to think on a problem, and that is I want you to think about what would be a good way to train people in these individual sounds like e eh and a, eh, or models, mottos, etc. What would be a good way to train people in these sounds without context, without comparison to similar sounds? How do you think we could train people so that they would be able to be to distinguish these sounds immediately upon hearing them without having to think or compare or rely on context. How could we train people to do that? Okay? Put that in your notes for Monday. I want to see that on Monday. Because I really want to know what you think, what would be a useful way to do this. This is, there must be a more efficient, effective way to do it in Taiwan. Because people's ears and brains are good, but habit is deep. And it takes some kind of training. There must be a good kind of training that works well and fast. Now, I said the problem that we have when we get to chapter 8, and I've been telling you about chapter 8 since the beginning of this course for semester, right? We've been talking about that very magnificent chapter 8, and we're finally here. And this year, we have an advantage because Professor Johnson is a specialist in acoustics. I didn't bring his book today. I may bring it on Wednesday. But he has written an excellent book about acoustics in phonetics, phonetic acoustics, acoustic phonetics. And he's so good at it. When you're so good at it, you forget to talk about the most basic things because you know them so well, they are second nature. You forget that other people don't have that same foundation as you, right? When you're teaching, sometimes in your tutoring, 
do you sometimes find that you're telling your students something, but they don't know what a conditional is or a past tense is? Has that ever happened to you in your tutoring, that you're talking about something, but the student doesn't have the background, so you have to explain it in simpler terms? No? Not happened to you? They always know what you're talking about. Okay, I guess you're lucky. <laughs> Your students are pretty good. Because sometimes when you're explaining some, something, sometimes you see blank faces and you realize they're missing the foundation, they're missing a lot of the building blocks. You have to go back and explain something more basic and then come back to what it is you meant to say. If you haven't had that experience yet, maybe it's good that we're doing something a little more unfamiliar to us because you'll learn more about that process. So here are some of the building blocks. Um, we're just going to go through the page. Eight, fundamental frequency and harmonics. Fundamental frequency, we all know. I think that nobody has a problem with that. What is fundamental frequency? It's ji pin, which is short in Chinese for ji ben pin, lu ji pin. And how do we define ji pin or fundamental frequency? How do we define it in terms of human speech? Exactly. It's the frequency of vibration of the vocal folds. So in ah, uh, the vocal folds are opening and closing at a certain rate per second. I think it's probably about 180 or 200, I'm guessing. Ah, uh, it's a pretty low note for me. And if ah, uh, it might be getting close to 800 or more. It's getting pretty high. My normal range or our normal, ra normal range, ladies, is around 235. That's about the average fundamental frequency for female speech. For guys, it's probably around 120, 150 for guys. They have a lower voice. When they bian, bian sheng, during puberty, they get larger here, and their vocal cavity becomes more resonant. So they've got a lower pitch, their organs become larger, they vibrate at a slower rate, they have a lower pitch. All right. That's fundamental frequency. But on top of that, we've got harmonics. This is going to take some fan chang, the gong fu. You're going to have to take some careful thought on this before your brain actually wraps itself around this and gets it. But you will get it. We know that what we hear, I'll use the microphone. <clears throat> we know that what we hear is a single sound or pitch when someone is speaking, for example, making the sound. E is really a fundamental frequency, ji pin, which is determined by how many times the vocal folds vibrate in one second and measured in cycles per second. CPS is another way of writing hertz or ji pin, cycles per second. People don't usually use CPS anymore, but that's one, uh, one other way to write it. Now we usually use the term hertz, which was named after hertz, and you can look him up who's a very famous physicist. So capital H-Z for Hertz. And it's not just the name of a car rental company. Hertz. Okay? Plus a whole series of harmonics. Fan yin. Now you've heard of fan yin in Chinese. Or overtones. Translated as bei yin. These two terms do not mean exactly the same thing. But for now, we're going to use them interchangeably. But we can ignore that for now. Harmonics, overtones, good enough. When you want to refine it, you can do it once you understand it a little better. Okay, paragraph one, we're all okay so far? On to paragraph two. What are the harmonics? They are multiples of the fundamental frequency. So that means if the fundamental frequency is 100, <laughs> I was doing that from memory, <laughs> but it's the same thing I've written. If it's 100 hertz, the harmonics will be what? 200 hertz. Keep going. 400 hertz, 500 hertz, and so on. Those are the harmonics or the beiyin, the overtones. So we already know how to calculate them. All we have to do is deepen, and then for the next harmonic, or the first harmonic, multiply by two, then multiply by three, <coughs> then multiply by four. That's all we have to do, and then we get the harmonics. So mathematically, we now know how to do it. We don't know why we do it this way, but we now know how to do it, right? Yes? You have to give me feedback now, or I really 
I'm going to have a hard time or you will have a hard time. I thought you understood and then you just sat there and actually, what the heck is she talking about? Okay? You guys need to nod your head when you get it. If you don't get it, so made ho or shake your head. And then I will stop and ask me a question and then we'll sort it out because we need to get it step by step. If we get lost here, we can't go to the textbook. Okay? Yes? Nod your head. Good. Right. If the fundamental frequency were 220 hertz, the harmonics would be, we're already doing math and we're feeling uncomfortable, but it's not hard math, right? It's arithmetic. So if it's 220 hertz, then the first harmonic would be 440 hertz. The next one would be 660. After that, 880. I've got you so far, no problem, right? We don't know why, but we know how to do the arithmetic. Um, in terms of intervals on the scale, we hear a bass note. It's octave. What's octave? Eight notes up. Say it in Chinese. Ba du in. You have to know the Chinese, because if you don't know the Chinese, then I'm not really sure if we're really communicating and understanding. So we start on a note, and then we take its octave. Yi ba du in. Then a note that is a twelfth up. Okay, li li a bass note, jiu shi shi er du in. That means it's a perfect fifth above the octave, above the starting pitch. So we go from the bass note to ba du in, then li ba du in zai gao yi ge wu du in. Then a note two octaves up from the starting pitch. So this is the bass note, the first one's an octave, the third one's a twelfth, the fourth one is two octaves, and then the fifth one is a major third above that. Two octaves, I jai ge san du in. If the starting pitch is middle C, and we define middle C as 256 Hz, this is our middle C. The overtones are an octave above middle C, so you go, it's a double quote mark. Uh, we can say C prime, C double prime, and that one is 512 Hz. How did we get that? Two times 256 is 512. That's not as easy as 100, right? But we can still handle it. And then G is going to be three times 256. Then we've got the C triple prime. That's going to be 1024 hertz. And then E triple prime, that's going to be 1280. G, which is 1536. And then 1792, we can keep on going on. That's, we keep going up by an octave, a fifth above the octave, etc., according to what it says here. Those are the overtones. We still don't exactly understand overtones, but we know how to get them. Your piano is actually tuned somewhat differently because it uses something called equal temperament. In Chinese, this is called pinjun lü. Now, this is a little slightly tiwai hua, but still on topic. What are, what are your understanding of ti, of Pingjun Lu and also your feelings about it. Do you have a good impression of Pingjun Lu? No? Wendy, why not? Um, I was learning the piano and I, I, I didn't like the, the, um, the ones that Bach wrote. You didn't like it. You have the idea that Bach invented the Pingjun Lu, but that's wrong. It's wrong. He, he wrote about the well-tempered clavier. Why do I know this? Because my British English teacher plays the clavichord, and he likes old tunings. So he talks to me about this very often. He's been talking to me about it for 17 years. Okay. <laughs> and I enjoy it. It's really interesting. You can look it up. It's not what Bach invented. Bach wanted to find a tuning that would give us the best sound for the most keys or for the, what the kind of music he was creating. But Pingjun Lu actually means everything is out of tune. Because a natural third, a natural fifth, 你这样子用自然的那个自然律在上去的话,它会有一些没有办法改掉。你要从C调 
到 F 调，到 G 调，你改调有些音会不对。你用用自然律的话 ，That's why in order to be able to switch keys conveniently without bad sounds, we decided instead of having pure pitches that are correct, we decided to make everything out of pitch, like 分配。这个音和这个音的差距，因为原来这个音和这个音的差距可能大一点，下个音跟下个音的差距会小一点。本来自然律是这样子 ，Do you understand what I'm saying? But in order to be able to change keys easily, we decided to never mind 自然律。我们就是反正从这个音到那个音有十二个 half step， 我们就全部分配那个音的那个宽度，这个音到那个音，这个下个音到下一个音。变成它的差距都变得一样的 ，That's that's 平均率，因为它本来应该是不均匀的分配。Okay, this is important because I just want you to understand some things that are going to happen with overtones in the human voice. Because overtones in the human voice are 自然律，它不是平均律。So you're going to get funny pitches that don't match up. You notice there's a B flat there. A B flat 冒出来了。那为什么会有个 B flat？ 是因为自然律。它的那个间隔不均匀的关系。Now, if you stay in the same key, 自然律比较好听，音很纯。一换调就是有问题。Now, this is as much as I'm going to tell you. I'm not an expert on it, but I can tell you this much with confidence. And anyway, yeah. I thought that Bach invents the twelve equivalent. That's wrong. That's wrong. And something about Inji. Right. That's right. But. The thing is, I've got this friend who's an expert on tunings, and he says that's the usual understanding of Bach, but that's not what he did. He actually invented a tuning that would sound good with the kind of music that he produced. It was not a, it was not a Ping Jun Lu. Is that tuning still used? It's used by people who like very Xuan kind of music, like my friend. It's not Some people will do it, but it's not pianos. No, pianos are definitely Ping Jun Lu. Which is why my friend doesn't like pianos. He likes the harpsichord, and he tunes it the way he likes it. There are many different alternatives. He doesn't usually use ziran lü. He uses all kinds of different tunings that are good for the key he's playing in, and that way we maintain pure intervals, like the thirds, the fifths. They will be pure, so our ears will not hear、uh, dissonance. Now, this is going to get too deep for what I can handle and for this class, but I just want you to know that much. We're using the 自然律 when we're talking about acoustics. Okay, so if you're interested in music and the history of tunings and things, there's a lot of stuff to look into, and you'll be shocked because the normal understanding in the world is quite wrong. Now, we normally don't hear the harmonics as separate tones. Every pitch that we make with our voice, we have a G P, but in addition to the G P, we have all of the overtones that we are sounding at the same time. So when we are making a pitch at 100 hertz, that 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400 hertz, those pitches, they are also being produced by our vocal folds. And when you hear people sing or speak, especially a large man who's a good speaker, now there are a few I can think of, especially some some former students who had really resonant voices. One guy is really thin, but he had a really resonant voice, because. He knew how to use his resonance in his speech to make it sound very chunghu. So you can tell the difference between someone who has a very 很轻声音很细很细，然后有些有些人声音很醇厚，觉得很很 rich. Do you know what I'm talking about? Especially like male news announcers. Now this evening with the weather, we're going to. <laughs> 他就讲的很纯很 full 这样子。That's somebody who knows how to use his natural resonances, his natural overtones. They become very, very rich resonances. Now, I, I, we will understand that more in the future. But every single person, every human being who uses their voice, they have all of these overtones, and they go on into infinity. Starting from the first overtone, the second, the third, the fourth, they go on into infinity. But after about, say, the eighth or the twelfth. The amplitude is very low, so we don't hear them that clearly. But the lower ones, actually, we can still sort of hear. They add to the richness of the voice. We don't hear them as separate pitches. 没有独立听出一个两百赫、三百赫、四百赫的声音。可是因为有他们的存在
，所以这个声音听起来就是醇厚，因为不只是一个基频在那里，有很多背音叠在它上面，一个背音比一个背音声音小，可是它就是会增加它的 richness。Do we sort of understand so far? Where the overtones come from, we still don't know. But now we know, for every G P that we have, determined by the rate of vibration of our vocal folds, there is a whole set of pitches that are multiples of that pitch that are being produced by the voice at the same time, and that our ears hear not as separate pitches, but as richness in the voice. Do we understand so far? Anybody want to give me feedback and or ask questions? Yeah. That's an interesting question. Can you wait for like about four weeks, <laughs> three or four weeks, maybe three weeks, three and a half weeks? I don't know. I have a web page about it. It's something called undertones. It's something special. Normally we don't, but in a certain circumstance, some people can produce them. For example, you know, in Tibetan chanting, Shi Zhang, 他那个在在诵经的时候。不是有就是低的不可思议的音吗 ？We believe they use undertones, but that's a special skill. Most people don't do that. I think you can learn it. I can't. I haven't learned it, but I believe some some people can learn it. I know some people can learn it. Most people don't do it. Does that answer the question for now? Okay. I can tell you right away, actually, since I've said that much, what we believe produces the undertone is we have in addition to our vocal folds. We have some false vocal folds. 也有两片组织在那里，是不是真的那个嗯嗓门？不是真的那个嗯那个 vocal folds， 而是有点像它。然后呢，它也可以震动，可以使它震动。哈，不是 ，That's another thing. That goes high. 假声是因为你 ，It's how you how you hold your vocal folds. You make them very tight. And you come up with a high pitch. That's a jiayin. That's falsetto. That's another thing. There's a whole bunch of things we do with our voice, and we understand most of them. I can't talk about every one of them now, but falsetto is another thing. Right now, we're talking about something you said that goes below, right? That is done, as far as we know, with the false vocal folds. 而且它震动的频率是你的真的 vocal folds 的一半的速率 So if you're Vocal folds are vibrating at 100 hertz. Your false vocal folds will vibrate at 50, right? And a 50 hertz pitch, it's getting very low. Our threshold of hearing is about 20 hertz. Under 20 hertz, it has to be very loud for us to hear it, and we will not hear it as a single pitch. We will hear it as a series of taps because it's too slow. So it'll sound more like da 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 instead of like a single pitch. I've heard lower pitches than that, and if they're loud enough, even with my relatively older ears, I can still hear it. But it already it's the, 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 it's separate pulses rather than a smooth pitch. Our brain processes the, these separate pulses even at a thousand hertz. It's still separate pulses, but they melt together. They meld together because of the way our brain processes them. We can't hear so fast that we can hear each pitch separately. We hear them as a single pitch. So this is getting a little bit off topic, but since you asked it, I want to try and clear up what I can as we go along. So that's okay for now, right? Anybody else? You need to ask anything before we go on. So our vocal folds. We'll use 100 hertz just because the, the arithmetic is easy. In addition to the 100 hertz, ah,、uh, we've also got 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way up. Each overtone has a smaller amplitude than the previous one. So it's like a, the answer that you you tell shit, okay? We're but, and this is it. Oh, let's read. I haven't read this. We normally don't hear the harmonics as separate tones. First of all, because they have an increasingly lower amplitude than the fundamental frequency, the higher up they go. The harmonics are nevertheless present in the sound. 不管你是不是听得出来，它依然存在，它就是存在 And they add a lot of richness to the sound of a human voice. Or a musical instrument, and many other kinds of sounds. Without them, a voice would sound thin and uninteresting. I can compare the voice to something that is thin and uninteresting, basically, in that it usually has only a fundamental frequency. It doesn't really have overtones normally, and that is whistling. 
whistling 其实是很单调，所谓的单调，就就可以指 whistling。Because when we whistle, we're producing only one pitch. We're not producing all those complicated inter,、um, overtones. So that's just what you hear. What you hear is what you get. But if I hum the same pitch, now maybe it's not beautiful, but there are overtones that make it sound richer than that very hen fan bao 的那个吹口哨的声音 Okay, we will see an instrument that can show it to you with colors. Okay, we use colors to show that image when we get to the bottom. Okay,、um, but where do the harmonics come from, or more precisely, how are they produced? If you play the guitar, you are probably familiar with harmonics and how to produce them. Does anybody play guitar or a strummed instrument? Okay, you play guitar, violin. Okay, that's not strummed, but you still have harmonics on the violin. Fine, in. If you touch the violin string in a certain place. And you pluck this string lightly, you get a very resonant high pitch, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like a fan yin. Wendy, how about you? Hu Zheng also uses fan yin. 有时候有泛音的咚咚，轻轻的摸那那个那个弦，那个真弦。然后呢，你不是很用力让它一直震动，而是轻轻的用左手碰一下，然后左手弹就是轻轻的弹，它就。Sound in. That's called fine in. In English, it's called a harmonic or an overtone, and we will understand, huh? Um, in Wu Zhang, there's a way that you can make a sound、uh, with the same string, but a, a higher. You push it higher because you're pushing. You're making. I'm not pushing. You put your、uh, your left finger, hand. yeah, left hand, on the like yeah, 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 or part of the other part of the string. That's what we're talking about. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. First, I thought you were talking about 左手按，不是，你讲的就是泛音，那个叫泛音 in Chinese. Okay.、Um, and actually, the one instrument in Chinese history, I I studied Chinese music as one of my areas when I was at Princeton. Actually, I did it at Harvard with Zhao Yuanren, the new era. Remember, I talked about Zhao Yuanren. His new era. Uh, is is Rulan Rulan Zhao Bian? She was my teacher at Harvard, and so we learned a, a lot about this stuff. But the the instrument with the richest repertoire and and、uh, and theory and body of theory is what in Chinese music. Which instrument has the richest repertoire and body of theory? It's not Gu Zhen. Yeah, you're right. Gu Qin, exactly. Gu Qin. That is the instrument with depth in Chinese culture. The other ones are mostly from Zongya, most of them, or they were used around Confucius' time for Ya Yue, which nobody can listen to. It's 蛮刺耳的音乐。老百姓也不是那么喜欢那个音乐。Remember that even Confucius talked about Ya Yue and Su Yue. People like the Su Yue. Ya Yue is good for rites and not much else. The instrument that is truly Chinese and that has the deepest roots is the Gu Qin. And you will find an awful lot about harmonics if you read the literature of the Gu Qin, okay? But we can get harmonics on any plucked instrument.、Um, so you are probably familiar with harmonics and know how to produce them, even if you don't fully understand how they work. A guitar string works something like the vocal folds when it vibrates. 不是完全一样 but there's enough similarity that we can use it to explain each other. We can use one to explain the other. And is a li little easier to illustrate and visualize. So we will first look at how a guitar string vibrates in order to understand by analogy, 我们就用类比的方式 how the vocal folds produce harmonics, how it how they how they vibrate and produce harmonics. So we're going to look at the animations at the bottom of this page under standing waves. Standing waves 是说它两边是固定的 and the wave seems to be standing still. That's what we mean by a standing wave. So we're going to open this up. Now, this is basically how a guitar string vibrates. So this same point goes up and down, up and down. This is called the node because is this is this place moving? It's not moving, is it? This is staying still. So you can see that the string is actually divided up in many pieces, and these pieces are going up and down in opposite directions. This one goes up, then it goes down. So, 刚好相反 
right? These are antinodes and these are nodes. And this is formed because the original waves interfere or overlay on top of the reflected waves. This is still a little too much for us. But this is how a guitar string vibrates. And it's not just one up and down, it's a bunch of up and downs. That's the part that creates the harmonics. So we're going to separate them. If we had only a GP, this is how a guitar string would vibrate. So you've got a string this long, you pluck it, and it goes up and down and up and down. And that produces a pitch. And that is our GP. That's our fundamental frequency on a string. This is easy to understand, right? So however fast it vibrates, that will make a difference in the what? If the speed differs, the speed of vibration differs, it will produce a different I heard the right answer. Say it louder. Sorry? Mm, well, if you it's how hard you strum it. That produces different loudness for a string. If you strum it hard, it's louder. If you strum it lightly, it's softer. So no. The speed, we're talking about how fast it goes up and down, not how loud it is. It's not it. Frequency. frequency. Okay. So the frequency is the physical term. This is going to be in a test sometime. Frequency is a physical phenomenon. That's frequency. But what our ear hears is called pitch. pitch. So pitch is subjective. It's what we hear. It's what we perceive. Frequency is just a physical phenomenon in the world. But a higher frequency produces a higher pitch. There's some weird things that happen because of our ears, because of the design of our ears. Pitch and frequency But we're going to ignore that for now. You need to understand the basics first. So if we speed it up, the rate of vibration, we would hear a higher pitch. Are we okay so far? Now, this is the fundamental frequency. This is the most, this is the simplest, most straightforward way of vibrating. Vibrating. I picked it up myself. Okay, and this is what our ears hear. This is the note that we hear, G or C or Do or Mi or whatever it is. The G pin determines what our ear perceives as the note being. Okay? The thing is that as it's vibrating up and down, the, the string is actually cutting itself into pieces at the same time. So right in the middle of the string, it's going to have a node. You see that part I call the node that's not moving? That part is not moving. It's letting both sides go up and down. It's going to be half the length of the string. So it has 长度, 这是G-pin. 刚好在它一半的地方, 它这个地方会固定, 然后左边会刚好相反的上上下下. It's doing that at the same time. So it's vibrating. You know that when you look at a guitar string vibrating, it looks very fuzzy, right? 它就是很模糊,很毛毛的样子. 那是因为它有同时它同时在进行很多不同的震动的方式，不只是上下。上下的话， you'll be able to see it quite easily. 可是因为它就是刚好，这个 string 分在分到一半的那个地方，它左右两边会刚好相反的上上下下。With each side going up and down like that, if we don't look at this, this just looks like the simple string, right? 这边盖掉的话，就是我们原来看到的那个G-pin的样子，对不对？我们就不要看右边那那半。Do you understand what I'm saying? 我们刚刚看到的第一个 animation，对不对？它就是这样子。那这个的话，我们切一半的话，它也就是第一个那个样子。可是呢，它的速度呢，是刚好上面的那个的一倍。我我们说两倍好了。In Chinese, it's so confusing. 从此我们不用一倍这个说法, 从此我们都用两倍, 两倍 means 乘以二, okay?
So we're not going to use 一倍. It's totally confusing in Chinese. We will always say 两倍, and that just means multiply by two. So it's the same movement. 我们不要看右边的那个, 那个动作还是一样的, 可是它的速率是上面的那个真正的方式的多少的两倍快,是不是? 这个有他自己独立的 一百赫，我们切一半，然后呢，上下它的长度只有上面的那个一半，然后它速率是一两倍，那就变成两百赫了。So它在发出一百赫的同时，它同时也分成两段，然后每一段都在发出一个两百赫的一个声音。This is the wall you have to get over. 这是第一堵墙要去翻。now, some people may get it and it will take longer. Everybody will get it, but it will take a little time. So imagine the string going up and down, 一种方式. 的同时, this string will cut itself in pieces. 它自己就会刚好在很均匀的这样子分成两块. 然后两边也会继续震动, 可是是跟第一个有点独立, 它自己会上上下下, 两边速率是上面的那个的两倍。长度呢是上面的那个一半，所以它发出的声音是刚好要一个八度音，要乘以乘以二，一百赫乘以二就变成一个八度音。只要乘以二就变成一个八度音。Okay? So that means the first string may be going hmm, but at the same time, the two pieces that are also vibrating at the same time are going hmm,同时发出的声音。do we get it? Yes? Really yes or sort of yes? Be honest. You mean not completely. That's okay. Give us some time. All right? So, Jerome, do you think you got it? Can you explain it in Chinese so the rest get it better than I can explain it? Then 它不是因为两边在震动，因为两边它发出的声音是一样。一条弦一切一半的话，它这一半的长度，它的声音就要乘以二，就变两百赫了。是因为它短，然后上下的那个速度是一倍，就是波长变小，然后这个频率就会刚
就本来就 limited， 因为它只能骑在那个很大的那个的上面再去震动，它没有那么多空间，这个是有点 misleading 在那方面。它其实它跳的那个距离比较小，比较远，比较 sorry， 那那远，比较短。OK。Now， why does the string cut itself into pieces？ Because 在震动的同时，它就不会那么稳，它就是会很均匀的，因为一直在 winding。OK。Question. Wait, wait for a while. We'll get to it. Okay, we will get to it. Just wait for it for a while. Okay. So the string, because it's moving so much, it actually cuts itself into pieces and has those smaller pieces. They are all vibrating at different rates at the same time, but. They are all multiples of the first frequency, the fundamental frequency. 都是乘以二，乘以三，乘以四。因为它是这样子，这是乘以二，对不对？它切成两半。So what's coming next? 对，切成三段。它也在同时进行。基频 one， 然后呢，第二个背音，或者第一个背音，这样子是切半。第第呃第第二个背音是这样子，是切成三段。So 这个那个在进行的同时有这个，同时也有这个。So now it's getting kind of complicated, right? So this one's going up and down in halves. This is going up and down in thirds. So yeah. All of these sounds are simultaneous. Right, all at the same time. That's the faster one. Right, but no, well, they they go at this. <clears throat> so in one second, right, the first one goes up and down how many times in one second? A hundred times. But the second one goes up and down two hundred times, and the third one goes up and down three hundred times. So it's all going on at the same time. So the first one has gone up and down a hundred times, but in the meantime, this one's gone up and down three hundred times. It's all fitted into the same second. It's all very tidy. 对，因为是同一根弦，然后呢，它就是要均匀的分一半，分三分之一，四分之一，五分之一，一路下去。Do you have something I can help? 就是就是因为在同一个介质上面波的传递速率永远不定，所以就是当它要震动，就是。当它每一次震动可以走距离变短的时候，它就要震，它震动就要变快，所以它就要走更多距离才能到，才就是到达同一个长度、同同一个地点。呃、uh, ，等于是这样子。But we're talking now about a standing wave. It looks like it's it's just sitting there. Of course, things do actually move. It looks like it's just sitting there, and we can study it in that way. It is actually moving across the string. You're right. But if that helps you understand it, that's great. So these are moving three times as fast. And they're producing a 300 hertz pitch. This is harmonics. Does it make sense now? You mean it's okay? Everybody got it? So our vocal folds do this too. They are not guitar strings. But think of, let's go back to our page. There's four. All right, so we've gone up to four. That's as far as we'll go. But there's, it goes up to infinity. But after about 12, we don't really hear them. And this is what it looks like when they're all going at the same time. Now, if I showed you that at the beginning, it would make your head spin. But now you can look at it and understand it. What color should you look at to start? Blue. Just focus on the blue. Is this easy to understand if you just look at the blue? You can see the blue acting normally, right? What's the second one we should look at? Yellow. If you only look at the yellow, can you see it doing what we just saw? It's cut in half, and the two halves are going up and down at opposite times, right? Okay, at the same time, one goes up while the other goes down. Let's say it that way. All right, what's the third one? Green. Green, green. right? Not green, by the way. Green, uh, uh, not green. Green. Everyone, green. 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 Beautiful, because Taiwan English it's usually green. Ah, oh, shit. So that one is going up in how many pieces? Three pieces. You can see it doing just what we saw up, up there. And then the last one is white. How many pieces? Four. Four. 
So one string being excited once is going to vibrate in all these different, we call them modes, M-O-D-E, mode. 不同的方式, we can just say in Chinese, at the same time. So the one that we hear the most clearly is the which color? Blue. The blue gives us 100 hertz. That's what we hear. That's the pitch we think it is. But then the yellow and the green and the white add beiin on top of it. And they make the sound sound richer. Because the same pitch is being it is the same, the same, starting from the GP, we cut it in half, we cut it in thirds, we cut it in fourth, fourths, each one will emit a sound that is related to the GP. It's related because it's a multiple. So that's actually where our sense of pitch comes from. 我所谓的自然律,它是这样子来的。可是呢, if we want to use it on a piano, we have problems. 因为你换一个调子以后,它就会有很多很刺耳的音。but if you stay in the same key in the lower pitches, you'll be okay. Dissonant the negative. Alright? Yeah. Each overtone has a smaller amplitude than the previous one. Right. But in the animation? Yes. I think the amplitude is that's that's a that's a that's misleading. They only did it to make it clear to you. It is actually much smaller. Each one is smaller because it doesn't have that much room. The, the string in its full length, it has a lot of room to go up and down. Okay? So are we pretty much okay so far? This is the hard stuff. It's starting to get hard. This is... Wendy? Okay, go ahead. Why did you say to everybody? Yes. Okay, we will worry about that. That's another thing. We're talking now about the harmonics, when the string sort of cuts itself into pieces. Each piece is smaller than the original one. It doesn't have that much, much room to go up and down. Okay, that's all we need to know for now. And by the way, the hardest thing in acoustic phonetics is not pitch. This is our <laughs> C. This is not the hardest part. The hardest part is actually Loudness. Thumbbe. That is hard. That's complicated. And we're going to go through a tutorial in class that you will understand maybe seven Z E of. Yeah. And that's enough. I'm not going to test you on it. But I made the tutorial because for a similar reason, Peter Ladefogel in an old edition, he had one paragraph that unless you are really good at acoustics and physics, you would not understand a word of it. So in order to explain that one paragraph, I made a whole PowerPoint tutorial which may have some, some mistakes in it, I'm not a physicist, but I've had physics professors look at it and they've given me, and also students have given me um, corrections, so it's mostly okay, I think. So, um, we got this far. Well, there's another thing, just um, to show you, since I have the, um, I have the software ready. Um, think of how an eel moves in water, mayu. Imagine each of the little ripples, Imagine them as smaller movements of the vocal folds when they're vibrating. Each of the peaks is hitting the air at its own faster rate and producing its own little sound at the same time as the whole eel-like flaps of the vocal folds are producing a lower sound from the biggest wave that rolls over the flaps from end to end. And to see the harmonics of your own voice, you can make a short recording on Pop and choose the narrowband spectrogram display. You will see a series of evenly spaced 
horizontal black lines. For now, don't worry about the thick dark bands, the form and sickle and zen foam, we'll talk about those later. These are the overtones of the fundamental frequency of the vib vibration of your vocal folds. If you'd like to see the overtones in real time and in color, try downloading the frequency analyzer. This has been around for over 10 years, I'm amazed, it's still there. A lot of the links die, right Mendy? A lot of the links die, this one's still there, except for but you can get the link here, and I have it ready. Okay, this is the place where you get it. You download it here, and this, oh, sorry, I have to open another window here. It's this one. All right, now, it's not connected to this microphone, so I brought my own microphone here. And let's start it, and then you will see at the bottom is my fundamental frequency, and you will see lines evenly spaced lines above it, which are the harmonics. So I will just say a vowel. Ah, e, o. It's so low you can't see them. So we have to go a little higher. A, there's the GP. One, two, three, four. Those are the harmonics. You can see they really are infinite. A, A, A. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? All right, so your gonka is, I want you to download this and I want you to play with it yourself. You need uh, to have a microphone attached and then just try all kinds of different sounds, higher and lower, and then see what happens. Now I said there's a sound that does not produce overtones, that is bijal tamba, which is what? I know my whistling's lousy, but even if you're a good whistler, I, I do better sucking in. Any overtones? Nope. Ah, uh, overtones. No overtones. Cool? All right, now you're, they got done, I can see it, okay. <laughs> it's really cool. Now at the beginning you're thinking, oh my God, science, I didn't want to get into this. That's what you're thinking at the beginning, and it was hard. But now you understand how it works. It's cutting itself up into junior, into pieces. Each piece has its own frequency getting a little softer. Everyone download this at home. This is your gong ke before Wednesday, because Wednesday I will bring a guitar. And then we will actually listen to, we'll produce and listen to the harmonics. So, and we'll use a, a, a pitch meter that will tell you if the pitch is exactly what they say it is. Yeah, so we're going to do that on Wednesday. And who would like to be um, the guitar player? Amy, you want to? No? Who would like to? All you have to do is strum a string. Do you want to do it? Okay, so Amy will strum the string. Who would like to take care of the pitch meter? Pitch meter? Okay, and someone else needs to take uh, care of the measuring tape. Okay, Yumi? All right, so we've got our people already decided, and the rest of us are going to gather around. We'll have a chair here. You'll play a string, and then we're going to produce different overtones and we're going to measure the string, and then we're going to use the pitch meter to make sure that they really produce the pitch that they say that they're going to produce. It's pretty cool. This is already cool, all right? So everybody go home and play with it. Show your roommates and your friends. <laughs> and don't forget that for Monday, what do you need to put in your notes? How to train people without relying on context or contrast with a similar sound. Okay, that should be it for today. We'll see you on Wednesday.